So I'm going to be honest. I tend to procrastinate. And in this process of becoming a content creator and, of course, as a photographer, there are some things that I've been trying to observe about myself to try and prevent myself from procrastinating so much. And one thing I realized, and this is something that applies to everything universally, I hate having to set up. What I mean is, like, for example, here in the studio, these lights, I leave them on as much as I can. I mean, I leave them on the stands right here because I don't want to have to set up. I want to be able to just plug something, flick a switch, and start recording. That's basically how I operate most of the time when I have a kind of semi-permanent setup that I can just leave. And that's actually why I came up with this area or I set up this area this way. And I realized that it's pretty much the same when it comes to editing. When it comes to editing, it might not actually have to mean that way. I don't really have to set so many things up. But of course, when it comes to editing in your own space, there are a few things that can definitely help you either be more efficient or some things that can help you be more comfortable. And let me share with you this setup that I put together here inside Outspace Studio. That is basically a plug and play setup. Yes, you only need to plug one cable and you're connected to everything. Now obviously the main ingredient of this editing workspace is obviously the laptop or the computer that you're using. And of course, there are some things that might apply to you and some things that might not apply to you. But this is generally my own personal recommendation on a desk setup that is actually geared towards efficiency and convenience more than just aesthetics. And I, I really don't think that this is aesthetic, but this is a setup that works for me, especially here inside the studio. So for this one, of course, I'm using the new Asus Vivo Book. Pro 16X OLED. It's the laptop that I'm currently testing and it's the laptop that I've been using for the past projects that I've been doing in the past few weeks. And yeah, it has an Intel Core i9 processor, 13th gen. It has an NVIDIA RTX 4070 laptop GPU, a 16-inch screen, and an Asus dial pad on it. And I might do a review about it, but ultimately, it's the one that I'm using right now. And it's the one plugged in to this entire setup. Now, there are many different components to this setup. And let me start with power or power supply. And basically, this is something really convenient that I got recently from Ugreen. Simply because it powers almost everything, considering that most things can now be charged with USB-C. This laptop can be charged with USB-C, of course, an iPad, an iPhone, and even cameras can be charged with USB-C. So this is actually the Ugreen Nexode 300 watt charger. Now it has four USB-C ports and of course can give a total of 300 watts or can be split to up to 140 watts per slot. And of course it also has one single uh, USB-A port that can give 22.5 watts for, you know, older devices that might need charging. So basically, this is the one powering my laptop and basically powering anything that I want to charge here in this setup. And of course, also if, for example, one of my studio partners, for example, Bea Chu is working here on the other side of this corner, she can just plug in a cable and also charge her laptop or any of her devices. At the same time, this is also powering a desktop MagSafe charger for my phone. And basically, anything else that I want to plug in will be powered by this. Now, the second component is actually something that you can't bring with you anywhere else or you might not want to bring with you if you're editing anywhere else. But if you have a kind of permanent or semi-permanent setup, then this is something that you should definitely have. And that is, of course, a color accurate monitor. Now, color accuracy, you will hear some people that it doesn't matter anymore. And uh, I honestly disagree with that because color accuracy is still very important, especially if you're doing crucial professional work or 
more importantly, commercial work because that's mainly where color becomes much more crucial in, for a photographer. And of course, in addition to that, if you produce prints, then you definitely have to be calibrating the screen that you are working on. Now, there's something very important that we all need to understand about color calibration. We can see so many monitor brands, laptop brands that say that their displays are color accurate. And there's something that I just really have to say about that. Color accuracy actually refers to the display being able to, to render out the proper colors. And for that to happen, your display should be matched with the lights that are surrounding it. Basically, any other light in the area that might somehow change your perception of colors should be taken into consideration so that the monitor can adjust. And of course, if you have a monitor and you want to be color accurate, a crucial thing to have is this. Now, what is this? This is not a weapon. I just really put it in this hard case, but it's a color calibrator, it's a colorimeter, it's a Spider X, and there are other brands such as uh, x right and others. But basically, you cannot have a color accurate display without one of these. Or if you have a more expensive monitor, it might have one built in. But definitely, no matter how expensive, no matter what kind of monitor you are using, your display will not be color accurate if you don't calibrate. No display is color accurate where you use it out of the box. Now, you will actually see many different specifications when it comes to displays. And that might refer to its ability to display a range of colors or it might actually be about the color accuracy. If we are talking about color gamut, then basically it's telling you how many colors it can display. And it basically tells you how much it can display pertaining to a particular color space. So it's very important to learn what color space is important for what work. However, the true measure of color accuracy is actually what we call delta E. And delta E is a value that is basically pertaining to the variance of colors that a monitor can display. And the actual rating depends on the current calibration when the monitor is tested. And this is very technical, but Basically, you want to be able to get a monitor that is around delta E less than two or even less than one to be able to assure yourself that it can be that accurate and that the variation between the colors that it would display is very low. Now, the next component of this desk setup is actually a simple pen tablet. Because for me, especially if you are doing some editing work that requires a lot of manual retouching, or if you're doing a lot of heavy manipulation or composite work, a pen tablet really is something that you should get. Now, your choice of pen tablets should depend on your own personal preference. Some people actually prefer small pen tablets because it's just much easier to use because the area to work with is very small. Now, the difference of that, of course, would be that since the area is small, then you might have to zoom in a little if you want to be a little bit more precise. On the other end of the spectrum, you can use a, a large pen tablet or you can use one of these, which is actually the monitor I'm using. This is the Huion Canvas Pro 24. And aside from being a pen tablet, obviously it's actually also a screen. So this is a 4K screen, 24 inches with sRGB 140%. And basically this huge of a workspace. It of course has HDMI and USB Type-C connectivity when it comes to input. Plus it also has a few extra USB ports and even a 3.5 millimeter audio port to be able to kind of lessen the load on the laptop or kind of work as a USB hub. And I'm going to be doing a separate review for this, but basically this is something that I really got excited about putting up this workspace because of course this is a 24 inch pen display tablet and it's really going to be such a huge asset to this editing workspace that I will use for myself and at the same time I can share with anyone who comes to visit the studio and use 
this workspace. Now, the next component is actually interconnected with the tablet. And of course, that is an editing controller. Now, I use many different editing controllers. I used to have a tour box, but I really found it a little too much in terms of the shortcuts for me. I use one from Sense Labs with a screen whenever I'm editing outside the house. And, but here, since I have this Huion display here, I am also using the Huion K20 mini key dial editing controller. So this one actually has 16 buttons that you can customize to all the different editing shortcuts that you're using. And that of course depends on whether you're using Photoshop, Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, or Premiere Pro, or basically any software that you want to use because you're going to assign the hotkeys and the shortcuts. Plus it has this one dial that can be assigned for zooming in, zooming out, um, moving to different layers or changing the brush size. So basically what this is gonna do is it's going to save you from having to move your hand from the mouse to the keyboard or the keyboard to the screen or whatever. And basically just give you better ergonomics when you're editing your photos or your videos. Now this last piece of the setup is actually relatively small compared to everything else I've talked about. But this is basically the thing that brings everything together. This is basically what makes it plug and play and what allows me to be able to set up the entire workspace with just one cable. And it's this. This is the Ugreen 12-in-1 USB-C docking station. And it has all the ports that I need to be able to connect everything I want to connect to the computer. Now, if you have a desktop computer and you have all the ports you need there, then you might actually not need to use one of these. But if you use a laptop, and especially if you want to avoid having to plug and unplug things every time you change your setup or every time you change the location where you are editing, then this is definitely something that can help you. Now, this one has an SD card reader, a TF card reader. It has a 10 Gbps USB-A 3.2 port and a 10 Gbps USB-C 3.2. And at the same time, it has a 3.5 millimeter audio port right here, which is where I connect my monitor headphones. Now, here at the back, we have a 1000 Mbps RJ45 Ethernet port. We have, of course, another port that actually accepts power supply and can basically uh, supply 100 watts to anything that you plug in. And of course, we have one HDMI port that's up to 4K and one HDMI port that's up to 8K. And we have one display port that's up to 4K. And at the same time, we have an additional two 5 Gbps USB-A ports. That's a mouthful. But basically, we have one port for output onto the host, which is the laptop. And what this actually does is, of course, I plug in the HDMI from the monitor, from the pen display, onto the, one of the ports here. I plug in the USB cable to the pen display onto one of the ports here. And of course, I also plug in the output of the charging hub onto here so that the host cable that's connected to my laptop will also be charging the laptop altogether. And that's basically why it allows me to have just one cable to plug in whenever I get here to the studio and right away start working and hopefully avoid procrastinating. And there we go. I'm sure you probably have some suggestions or maybe you have differing opinions or some experience that you want to share and you can definitely leave that in the comment section. And thank you if you've gotten this far into the video. Of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I'm a landscape photographer. I'm an architectural photographer and a content creator. And this channel talks about basically camera gear and tech accessories and tutorials and reviews and all of that. And if you're into that, then click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. In any case, thanks for watching.